Every breed, for instance, I post all kinds of fun stuff. This is just some of the demographics. You can see the demographics. Remember we talked about target audience. You can see the women 30, 35 to 44 was number one. Not so much 65 minus. I don't even go after anything under under 18. Uh, that's that's probably a good thing, Mike. They're not on Facebook. <laughs> the kids are not on Facebook. Nick Face. I think I said a lot of this. We talked about having sizzle. We, you know, one of the things that's really changed this last year is I think we've got a lot of sizzle going with it because I'm doing all my own artwork. I've got very creative artwork that grabs their attention. When they see the ad on their newsfeed, they hit it. They see more things that catch their attention and they see some hard hitting uh, text. Come to the catch show this Saturday. Okay, and I, I, I hit the hell. I, I, and Lauren's now following me on that also. It's, it works so well, I'm almost afraid Facebook has been outlawed. Because it's just, I really am. Uh, when they like your page, it's not meaningless. You want them to like your page or follow your page because then they get all your posts. And I do 70, 75, even up to 85 posts on one event in almost in just over a week usually, or less than a week. Um, so there's a lot of work that goes in, into it. It's it just not said and go. I'm on constantly monitoring the spot. Uh, the, Everything that's going on. Uh, I'm doing almost live pictures. I, I did a special post like that. This was actually from a live show, and I got a picture of a young man meeting a cat. Favorite pictures. I'd love to, to post pictures of, of children meeting cats. Share your cats with people. Next. Next. And by the way, the, uh, the and back, I was talking to Karen Lane. I knew this was coming. She's reworking the ambassador program with the Pet Me Cats. And, Looking forward to having some new, new punch in that area. So that's an important piece. Now this is a, this is a piece that uh, I thought I would bring up because 95, 98 percent of the time, Facebook events work really well, but sometimes they once in a blue moon they don't work well. And how can that happen? Well, realize that Facebook uh, advertising is all bid. If we're bidding for spots on the newsfeed. And if there's lots of events going on, it's going to jack the price up. Because I know how to optimize it, so I get great pricing. But if we've got a lot of competition in the market, it can really degrade it. The Albany show I did for Pam Mosier in March, we got over a $10,000 gate. We turned around for her regional I did on a one-day show. And we were against all the graduations of the colleges and high schools of Oregon. We were against all kinds of events going around it. The cost per thousand would be a married thing. But the cost per result or cost per impression, there's all kinds of different ways to look at analytically. We're sky high, and I had to use some plans, plans B and C just to get anything going. She still got a two thousand dollar gate. But 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 just realize that it's not always super magic. There are market-based things that can have an effect on it. I mean, I do the same stuff, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's killer, and sometimes it's good. Okay. Next. So this is some of my breed posts. Every single breed that's in the show, I do a breed post on them, educating the people on the breeds. And then with every post I do, I hit, it, I hit them back with come to the cat show, and I do all kinds of specialized text, special enhanced text and emojis. I do, uh, there's an FAQ on every post. That was a nice piece of editor I did by the top 10 breeds, I've been using that one. Next. And then I do a lot of fun stuff. This, this shampoo kitty is one of everybody's favorites. They love that shampoo kitty. So I do that one on Thursday morning. We're getting our cats ready. Are you getting ready to come? They, people love that stuff. I mean, you know, we got to have a lot of humor. The humor stuff is very, very important. I hit the rescues. I hit the vendors next. And then I do almost live pictures. Uh, this is actually at the Little Rock show. And I think Janet took these pictures, right? Yeah, Janet took these pictures of Kate. And almost my pictures, I, I, I posted at 11 o'clock in the morning, and we got 2,252 people who reached, saw it. 324 people responded to it in, in engagements. I mean, it was incredible. It's, it's viral. So why do you want to do that besides just big numbers? Because you got people sitting on the fence Saturday morning deciding if they're going to go or should, should I stay in bed. 
Okay, so I'm kicking them out of bed and I'm getting to the pillow to catch them. I'm trying to grab them every which way I can. Next. Just a little bit about Facebook stories. I'm amazed how many people know about Facebook stories. It's the top of all your feeds on Facebook. It's this little thing that goes across here. And see, I, I constantly am doing Facebook stories. That's an organic piece that I get for free and I do it on the, on the, uh, the Facebook pages, the host pages. Go ahead and come in. And just some of the demographic, some of the organic numbers. And the stories disappear every 24 hours, just like Snapchat, by the way. You have to keep reposting them. And I do, I use videos. They say you can't use videos, and they'll try to tell you you can't, but I actually use videos, which gives it a lot of animation. So I'm competing with these other Facebook stories that are single images. And here I got some flash going with mine. Yes, ma'am. Are Facebook stories tied to your event? No, they're not, no, no, they're not tied to the event at all. I have a time into my host pages. And that'll be, so it'll come up as a Mike Atchell No, story, it'll come, or? so I have, I have 32 pages I'm admins on, and, and I have three main pages I do the advertising on, so like at CFA Cat Shows, CFA Gloss Shirt Cat Shows, CFA Midwest Cat Shows, I have host pages I use. So there's group, pages, and event. Yeah. And there are, you don't want to use group, right? No, no, groups do nothing. Pages and event. Right. We can talk further about that, Lorraine, because that's 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 it can, can, that can be very confusing. Next page. And then I, I am using some Instagram. Instagram is a little hard to use, but if you don't have a big following, you're not going to have a lot of people. I try to hit some IG. It's called IG. Uh, if you got people in the club that are local, where they can hit their Instagram. So I mix some pieces for Instagram that they can post on Instagram. It works out really well when I have those people next. Uh, I, was, I played with some of the freebie stuff like Eventbrite, Eventsee, uh, Craigslist. I, I mean, I, I spent like 10 shows doing some of this stuff, just trying to get some, a number, any number, zero number, so I don't do it anymore. <laughs> coupons, we, I used to live on coupons back in the 80s when we did print advertising, newspaper advertising. I don't see a lot of influence on coupons. I noticed the AKC Meet the Breach thing that they're this huge uh, thing they're, they're hitting all the major markets with, where you can come and meet the meet the breeds and pet the, pet the dogs and play with them and all that. They're spending an unbelievable amount of social media on it. Uh, they are printing a 20% off coupon, but their ticket price is $30, by the way. It's not a dog show. It's just meet the breeds. Okay? This is where people live. They don't, they're not coming, for, as Lorraine would say, they're not good. the reason they don't come to the cat show for the cat show they come for the for the fun. Next, and then if I'm not going to talk about uh, high-end uh, banner advertising to Google, but I'm this is what I'm really trained on. The reason this is important is Facebook uses all the same analytics in the, in the same back end that Google AdWords uses and that search engine marketing uses. And I have lots of certs in that, so I knew Facebook inside out before I got into it. So that made it real easy for me to to understand what makes them tick. Because they, Google won the search engine wars, by the way, by always presenting to you when you did a search, called a query, what you wanted to see, right? You don't go anywhere else. Everybody goes, Google's got almost 90% of the market. Well, they did that by getting rid of the, if you don't click on things or you don't like the things, they get it off the first page. And Facebook does the same thing. If you don't like the ads you're seeing in Facebook, they jack your prices up, use up all your budget, and you're gone. On the other hand, if it's really hot, they lower the prices and you get seen a lot. So you gotta be one of those guys. Next. Some of the uh, newspapers in the electronic media are trying to have, they're trying to move over to the computer world. They're not doing it real, in the internet world, they're not doing a real good job with it, I don't think. I haven't seen a lot of really good products. But every market's different. You know, Kate's Little Rock market, the cat show was the big thing in town. <clears throat> there was actually a circus in town that same weekend. And we, we killed the circus. Yeah, we and they were down the road in the fairgrounds from us. We killed them. Next. Different show. There was a circus at the same time. So what really matters is your return on investment. I used to say that I was getting four to five dollars return on every dollar. I get a lot more than that right now in most of my shows. Next. Uh, one of the things I ask the clubs to do is several things. I used to just ask them to hand out the spectator guide so that people would know what's going on. They would have something to take home so they could remember to come to the cat show and maybe get involved. 
I still do require that all the shows I work with, but I also require you have 21st century pricing because people, young people won't go to something that's like only five or seven or eight dollars. They think it's not worth their time. You don't sell pet kittens for 50 bucks anymore. They won't come to look at them, okay? The pricing needs to increase greatly on our cat shows, but we need to give them a great product. Next. And you can compare to movie price tickets. You know, I have all these different markets I work with. It's like, well, you don't know my town, Mike. We, you know, everything's cheap in my town. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I'm talking to them. I look up what it, you know what a movie ticket is on a matinee? It's 12 bucks. That's two hours of entertainment. They're looking for two hours of entertainment. That's who you're competing with. Next. And I also require shows that I work with to do plastic. Garden State's doing credit cards for the first time this year. They're so forward thinking, so many things. That was such a funny. And, 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 and you know, it's like forward thinking, great, forward thinking, great, and then dark ages and then take plastic. Mm -hmm. So yeah. next, you gotta take credit cards. People, young people do not carry cash. And on many of my markets, I'm, I use online uh, tickets for the international, we use three different vendors. I like to use Ticket Leap. Third states end up using Ticket Leap. I use Ticket Leap a lot. The nice thing about online ticketing, <clears throat> you look professional. They pay all the fees, they pay the credit card charges, and you get your money whether they come or they don't come. It's all plus, 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 plus. And on that, on top of that, when you come back the next forward years, you can you can do email blasts to those people. You can hit them again. Next. Please have good signage for your shows, bring people to your show, especially outside. I've seen people walk, you know, try to find a cat show and they can't. I've watched people in parking lots they didn't have good signage and they, they leave. And I walked out and asked them where they're going. Well, we couldn't find the cat show. Have good outdoor signage. You know, buy some yard sale signs. Buy some real estate signs. They're cheap. Buy a hundred of them for a hundred bucks if, if you price it right. Um, talk about having friendly people in the front, rescues in the front, faster cats in the front. You got some ogres. We all have ogres that don't like people. They don't like our guests. Bench them in the back. You gotta reject Rome. We all have that. <laughs> I think the club, clubs collecting emails and have people you can communicate with is always a good idea. The selfie spots are good, free booths are good ideas. Continue. Make it, make it entertaining. Check my time. I'm right out of time. Because we're gonna have some QA. Uh, I require you do a contest of some kind or I won't do business with you. I'm sorry to say that, but I'm not. I'm here to help the future of CFA, not help your your club have a treasury for next year, even though that's important. But we got to have a future for ten years from now or twenty years from now. Thank you, Mike. So it's it's important. Over half the people come to the contest. I tell you right now, I've worked a lot of gates, and I, I people say, well, Mike, how do you know this stuff? I talk to my customers. How many exit interviews have you done at cat shows as people are walking out of your cat shows and you've asked them what they liked and they didn't like? Most people, most young people will tell you watching cats being judged is like watching paint dry. Hmm. And they're serious about that. <laughs> but all these things are good. You know, meet the breeds, have the celebrities, help the welfare. Uh, Lincoln State does all these things. Garden State does all these things. Wonderful stuff, face painting. Look at the look on these people's face. Look at, look at them. They're having a great time. Continue. Awesome. I wanted to spend some time with rescues, I'm not gonna have time for it. But I highly, you know, about half the clubs or maybe more have really good relationships with rescues. The rescues are just such an asset. First of all, it's the right thing to do. You know, CFA is for the betterment of all cats. Not pedigree cats, all cats, okay? Second of all, they're a huge asset with their all their Facebook following. If I can get them motivated with from me, and I, uh, they're gonna post on their rescue pages and we're gonna get a bunch of their followers come to the cat show. That's a nice gate that I can, I can tap into. But I help them the other way too. I do posts for them, continue. I started not only doing videos of the rescue cats, but I do an overall piece for them. And I make the artwork so killer that they have had anything that's good on their Facebook page. They want to use it. And they want to invite, invite everybody to come see the cat show because this is better artwork than the next one. 
this is the, all the organ. This is the better organ they had. They, these are animated, by the way, guys. I didn't run any animation on this. It, they're going to be forced. Next one. So, as a wrap up, we have a short term results. We can have money for next year. Happy guests. Happy guests pay for your gate. They, they buy vendors' goods and they adopt or buy kittens. Next. But what we really are after is the long term retention. What we really want is we want our replacements. When I'm gone, there's going to be a legacy for CFA. And that's all I care about. If there's a, there's a CFA when I'm gone. We also have allies against animal rights, re re repeat attendees. We're trying to get to CFA fans. Continue. Okay, so um, <coughs> these new people, they're precious. They're very precious and they're easy to run off. Like I said, they, they have soft skin. And I, and just as last year, my wife's doing all the newbie stuff too, and I hear these stories. And we work with a new exhibitor. She's got a breed that she bought. She bought wonderful cats from overseas. She went to four shows. The breeder of that breed comes up to her, looks at her cats. Your cats are crap. They have no business at a cat show. Mm -hmm. Never seen again. Gone. Same thing with an entry clerk saying something really ugly to all, all the new people. You know, if you don't get your entries in, I can't find a, a bad place to bench you. Said that. Said that. You know, well, it's not just so and so. It's like, well, the newbie doesn't know that just so and so, and she says stuff like that. The newbie didn't enter the show. The cat, the show had 100, less than 100 entries. I wonder why. All it takes is one bad experience to lose them. We work so hard to gain them. Let's don't lose them. You know, from a, a, a judge made, made a statement to a brand new exhibitor who flew to a Texas show from Northern California. Made a statement, is your cat is so mean it has no business in the show hall. No business. And it bears them so badly, it's a Saturday at lunch. They got on the plane, went back to Northern California and never seen again. They were, they were Asian, so they lost face too. And that's, a, that's another issue. So let's be really careful to preciously treat our people like a commodity. They're not you and me. I went five years before I made my first final. I had tough skin, but it was another era. This is today. We gotta live with the people we have. Next. Our future, where are we gonna be 10 years from now? 50 years from now. And I know, I, I you know, um, our new president's back here with Rich, and I know in Mark, and I know they have visions, and, and Kathy uh, Calhoun, I know they have visions, and I know that they are starting to understand their current show model is probably not sustainable in the future. Young people don't want to sit at a cat show all day for two days, and there's ways to, to, to do that differently. So just think about that. Next slide. Questions? What's Dallas? What is that? Cats of Wisconsin. Okay. So, okay. Um, so my feeling is we, we did this just this year. We have always had a very good gate once we started counting back up. But making more money to me isn't about making more money. Making more money is about being able to do more things to make more people excited about coming to the cat show. Getting more because as you mentioned, they have to come and see what a cat show is before they ever get excited about it. They come to the cat show, they get excited about it, they think, first off, it's going to be here next year, or if this was cool, I would like to be part of it. Making more money will let us possibly get the bigger building or do have more events. And also, it makes it sounds counterproductive, but we're not worried about what our count is going to be coming into the show. Right. Okay. We had 104 cats, and there's, I don't care how bad the weather is, we're gonna have a show. You know, whatever goes on, because the people that come are excited to come and meet the cats, and they don't care if there's 200 cats. Or they don't know the cats. difference. They don't know if it's a 400 cat show or a 50 cat show. They're just coming to see lots of breeds. They don't know that we have a small count show. Yeah. 
don't hang your head about that. You know, I work, I, Pam Mosier, uh, working with her at Lewis and Clark, you know, we're gonna limit entry to Lewis and Clark so we can have more gates. She realizes that the, where, the, where the future is and where the money is, is in the future people we find in the gate. And she's become the world's greatest admirer of costume contests after being so anti-costume contests. <laughs> she sat at the door, she sat at the door and listened to everybody wanting to know what the costume contest and instead of, set up and not wanting to ever do one, she said, Mike, I want to have one every hour. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, she did two in a one-day show. She was the first, my first person who did them uh, two in one day. And it was wonderful. She became the greatest doubters become the greatest believers oftentimes. Yes? As a call manager, show manager too, um, we're really struggling to get a show hall. Me too. But nevertheless, the thing about it is um, when you had helped us jump our gate from, I think, $800 consistently to well over $4,000. Um, every little bit makes a difference. But the one comment I wanted to make is that the follow through is really important. It's not just the before advertising. That's a good point. But it's, <clears throat> it's um, doing the damage control, it's watching the reviews because people will go on Facebook and post their experience. And um, the show managers or the show committee needs to be, pre or Mike. be prepared. And mm. Mike. Mike, yeah. Because Mike watches like a hawk. As right. you know, I'm still an admin on the Utah show, uh, the club. Right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so. But we, it makes a whole lot of difference. You please most of the people most of the time. You can't please all the people all the time. And right. I'm, I'm really used to handling it. One of the things that Mary, when I work with Mary's show, like, wait a minute, you're gonna do all the comments and you're gonna watch all this stuff? It's like, yeah, I do it all. <laughs> and then he makes his rate because I told him he was too cheap. <laughs> I haven't yet. I, I haven't yet. Oh, I thought you were 150 no. now. No, I have, you told Pam that, but she, I, she was willing to pay me 150, but I said, no, I'm still 100 hours. Oh, that's too cheap. <laughs> Next, I, yeah, it is too cheap. 100 hours of work, I'm getting a stipend. Listen, thank you for all that you do, but you thank have you. saved our butts multiple times. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Yes, Lori. Um, I have to say that we have had some pretty remarkable success with Facebook advertising. But second only to that is uh, place bad ads in local diners. Oh. I cannot tell you how many people come in, whether there's a coupon on them or not. They saw the kitties while they were having Sunday lunch. They came. See that's see that's my slide. There's all kinds of local stuff. I've never even heard of that one, but I'm familiar with that one. You know, they went to the local McDonald's, and when you get your tray, yeah, the paper. Yeah, no, no, I, it's all good stuff. No, I mean, there's a hundred thousand ways to advertise. I, I do have a specific concern in the uh, the space business. We're all struggling to have affordable show halls, and we all want to have a lot of gate. But there comes a point. I went to one show earlier this year that I will never go back to. I know that I, show. I could not walk down the aisle. I know that show. So, so that show will never have a show again probably in that hall because we outgrew it. We had to shut the door for 30 minutes. So that show, I'm a member of that club in Kansas City. No, it wasn't that one. It wasn't even the Kansas City show. It was, it was we went from $500 gate to $1,000 gate to 2000 Last November, <laughs> Mocan thought they hit the jackpot. We had a $4,000 gate in a one-day show, right? We did 9,000 in March. We had to shut the door for 30 minutes. We can't, we outgrew our show hall. Well, that's the thing is that, do you have any kind of guidance for, for example, the show? And I do talk to shows about that, making sure you have room. I have, we have a show every, for the Egyptian mouse and we have a show hall that's just big enough right. for a 225 show. We don't have room for a contest. We'll cost us $3,000 more to have room for a contest. We won't make that money back, even with gate. So, you would, I, I don't agree with you, but okay, go ahead. Well, I, I, additional <laughs> guidance on the spacing. I'm working with Jenny on that, by the way. I am supporting Jenny on that. Jenny's great. <laughs> I, uh, I, I just have one quick yes, sir. Uh, thing. What I'm wondering is, I wonder, Mike, if you could develop a slide presentation that we could actually take to some of these um, sh uh, event places that really are resisting going, oh, it's yes. just a cat show, yes, yes. And, and go ahead and yeah. show them. So I have pictures on my phone when I'm out telling, trying to sell myself on yeah. show halls, and I have pictures of 
ballrooms and stuff. It's like, because they think a cat show is going to be a nasty, dirty thing they don't want anything to do with. Right. So, so when you're out looking for a show hall, it, you have to have your tail, tail, tail wheel on. And that, that's not something that I feel like I can produce at this time, but maybe our new president can think about that and <laughs> give you another idea. Because mm -hmm. we have new, you know, we have, we've outgrown our show halls. They've gone up so much in price, but now, but we have money. Half the gate comes in for the contest, by the way. You, you double your gate if you, if you had some sort of contest. I had to and tell games. you. And what? And games. Oh, and games are good? Oh, that stuff's good. Lots of so, but, I, but you know, I know what you guys are doing. I understand what you're doing. You know, I don't think there's room for many just exhibitor shows anymore. We don't have time. We don't have time to just have exhibitors. And, you know, I, I look at some of the exhibitor-only shows where we don't, you know, we're kind of trying to gain people, and I'm thinking it's another nail in the coffin. I'm sorry, that's what it is, though. It's just another opportunity, a lost opportunity, that we get people in the door, but they didn't have a good time, so they don't want to come back to that cat show, and they don't want to be part of us. Okay, they've got to have a good time. Talk to your people. Talk to people walking out of a cat show hall. Find out what how they think. That isn't what you think. They don't think like you think. Don't decide how the young people think. I mean, you look, you talking to them until casually. Get down deep. Ask them, what did you like the best? What did you not like? What can we do better? It's just basic, what, you know, uh, customer service 101. I mean, I learned that from Bob Benny, J.C. Benny's nephew, when I was 16 years old. You talk to, you talk to your customers and find out what they want. And our customers are young people. But we're not young. Well, some of you are. But. <laughs> But I mean, most of us are not young, so we don't know how they think until we ask them. So I appreciate that. Any other questions? And I'm gonna be here uh, for about a while if you guys wanna ask questions. We're gonna have a, a nice ball ball today. So Mike, when you do a thing, you insist on $500 that you'll spend and then whatever your fee is gonna be. So um, I know with, uh, with the show that I was involved with, we wanted to cut it down. I don't remember what the outcome okay. was. But um, is there an is there a time where there would be less than five hundred dollars that the market was so small that you couldn't possibly? It's possible, you know. Realize that every market size maybe can't sustain five hundred dollars, but it isn't like I can get this big ad for five hundred and this big ad for three hundred. It's cost per person, okay? So when you cut down off of five hundred dollars to three hundred, you lo you've lost you've lost uh, forty percent of your of your market. You just boom because it's cost per person. And I mean, Garden State, they're doing 2,000. I mean, you know, we should, a lot of these shows, we shouldn't be doing 500, we should be doing more. Lincoln State's been doing 1,000 to 2,000. Um, yeah, we can talk about that. Anybody want to talk about that kind of stuff with me, I'd be happy to. I have somewhat strong ideas about this stuff. <laughs> But I've been doing it. I've, been, I've done 150 shows in five years. I've got it down, and it keeps increasing. And it keeps getting better. I mean, my, I mean, Mocan went from 4,000 in November. We thought we hit a home run. And then when 9,000, we blew up the show hall. I mean, who would have thought? Mike, if you're not available, do you have anybody else that does this sort of thing? Yeah, well, and Lorna's doing some shows, and uh, and I'm hoping to get uh, Jenny back on online where she's doing them all the time. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I have. I have. I have. I have. I have. When I began, I wanted. I wanted to have someone in every sh every club, and I realized what I'm doing is so deep and hard. It isn't. It isn't an easily trainable thing.